remember my father speaking at times how, in a humorous way, or in a, that he would speak of my mother, perhaps being, uh, when he had to correct her on something, she would um, not uh, particularly, she would not take it always in good, in, in, good uh, in the spirit that it was given. So I hope this brief mention, that I, the correction that I have to make, will be taken in the spirit that is given, in the spirit of charity. And, of course, this pertains to modesty. Um, when we speak of modesty, it's important to realize that when there's, if there's cleavage showing, there are short skirts with or without leggings, tight-fitting or revealing clothing. This is not Catholic. This is not pleasing to God. It is not for church, but modesty standards are not just for church. They are wherever God sees us. It is important for us to be a light to the world in this regard. And this is Father's Day, and I want, as God wants and all of us want, to have eternally happy fathers and mothers. And fathers, when it comes to your role in the family, it's important that you see that for what it is in the challenges that we face today. Imagine, if you would, someone who is leading a group of people through a very dangerous and deadly war zone with traps and snares at every step. This is the world that we live in. This is the spiritual reality you have, the spiritual challenge each and every person in authority with souls in their care has. The responsibility to disarm those traps, to avoid them, to lead those in their care around them. Your lack of leadership, your leadership or lack thereof, on this hinge entire families of souls. And indeed, we know the family is a basic unit of society. And if and as we have Catholic families that are pleasing to God, then our society will begin to change and transform. In this age of darkness, we cannot afford to be less than heroic leaders. Hesitation before the enemy in battle brings doom. In your families, it is important to realize that this hesitation will create confusion and chaos. You are responsible before God to know and enforce Catholic standards in the home, in entertainment, quality of work, ethic, work, discipline, dress, prayer life, in every aspect, spiritual and temporal, especially spiritual. Yes, much of the time is with mother or at school, but this in no way makes you any less accountable before God. You are the head of the family. The devil desperately seeks to make your role in the family a mere figurehead. Do you allow this? If you allow it, do you realize the consequences? God expects fathers to, of today to, to form souls strong enough to meet the future. The spiritual challenges cannot be greater. How can you possibly do this? The first thing you must have is you must have and insist on is a strong and solid devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus in your own soul and in your families. After all, you cannot teach what you do not know. It is this devotion which will sufficiently strengthen yourselves and your families for whatever God may allow. It is only through the Immaculate Heart of Mary this devotion can be made strong enough to keep from the home and the souls therein the entire loss of charity that we see enveloping our world? Is it enveloping our homes and our families and our parish? It has been said that the general population, of the general population, 20% volunteer. It is said of the general population at different phases in life, we expect certain different expressions of fallen nature, and it's not to be worried about necessarily. Our families of this parish like every other pagan family out there living a perfectly natural life, or are they different? Are we different? Are we the living light that God expects us to be, striving for Catholic ideals and standards? All those in authority have an obligation to inspire a hatred of the world, the flesh, and the devil, to inspire a love of God. Why is it so important to have 
this aversion, this hatred of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Have you ever tried to pour something into something that's already full? It doesn't work. It won't go in. It won't fit. It's not going to happen. It's not possible. So those who have the world, the flesh, and or the devil in their souls, they cannot have the love of God. It is impossible. And so it's important for you, fathers, to see your duty there. Pray for the guidance and the strength you need to do that duty. To enforce reverence in church. If there's no respect for God in his house, there will be no respect for you in yours. And if there's no respect there, authority in general, chaos ensues. The devil brings to fruition his plan for misery in the home. Remember, you teach both by word and example. And in the meditation, in my meditation for this morning, for, the, for this Sunday, for this gospel, it spoke of different things that were very important and are very pertinent to this topic. Those in authority, is it about God or me? What is the motivation when we give commands, when we're trying to do something? And it's not up to those under our authority to determine that, but it is important for those in authority to realize, yes, I have to give an account of what I'm doing here. Discouragement is a great way for the devil to take the wind out of your sails. And you're trying and you're trying and it doesn't seem to work. We have to pray for perseverance and the light that we need to overcome those obstacles, not let the devil allow that in our lives. Peace is also critical for the strength that we need to persevere. And there is a great book on this topic, and it also has a chapter on discouragement. It's called Peace, The Way of Interior Peace by Lehen, L-E-H-E-N. And also it brought out the meditation this morning, the importance of humility. That is critical, and that's something that people in authority perhaps are prone to because of fallen nature and self-love, and I'm in authority, and if I'm not careful, I can say what, I can enforce what I want. But it's important to, that we enforce what God wants, and this is, ties closely into, of course, pride feeds into anger. Do you example the fallen nature and lack of self-control, or do you example a calm yet firm and Catholic leader? What are your will and ways? A will of self or a will bound by the love of God to the souls in your care? The ways of the world or the ways of, and the ways of nature or rather the ways of grace? And again, it's not up to those under us to determine that, but it's important to have our own honest self looking into ourselves and self-examine. So what are you? What you are, your children will become. Maintaining respect is critical. Self-control does much to inspire respect. It is different. It is not the way of nature. This is important because as a father, you must inspire a love and a longing for the things of God, not earth. And the means to attain these, a strong devotion to the Holy Ghost, family prayer, and the sacraments. Straight from the book, The Popes on Youth, Men at Mass Mean Better Home. Under this heading, listen to the Holy Ghost by the mouth of Pope Pius XII in this book. Taught to worship and love the holy sacrifice of the myth of the Mass, young menfolk will easily become men of prayer and will make their homes shrines of prayer. How greatly this is needed. Who can deny the spirit of prayer languishes while the spirit of the world is gaining ground even in families that claim to be be still Catholic and faithful to Christ? Men who give themselves seriously to a deep study of the meaning and purpose of the sacrifice of the Mass cannot fail to kindle within themselves the spirit of self-mastery, of mortification, of subordination of earthly things to heavenly of absolute obedience to the will and law of God. This, no less than a renewal of zeal for prayer, is needed of the present day. 
since many nowadays, among whom it is a painful to see not a few Catholics, live as though their only object was to make themselves a paradise on earth, without thought of the last things of hereafter or eternity. And this was almost 75 years ago. What would Pope Pius XII say of today, of us? We need to make the Mass a priority. Yes, we cannot always go, but what are those times when we could, if we made a little sacrifice? Those extra daily Masses here and there when we could. And why is this such a big deal? Because family patterns repeat. And we want to make it a good, solid Catholic pattern that can save generations that will follow. Great leaders and great examples that work great miracles of conversion so desperately needed in our world today. Not according to the standards of the world, our own ideas, but according to the way and will of God. As men, you bring home bread, rain or shine, sick or well. You make sure your family is provided for. But remember, the true work of true men is to work for souls, providing for the spiritual needs of the family. This makes your fatherhood truly a participation in the fatherhood of God the Father. Are you ensuring in your soul and in your family daily spiritual exercises? Or do you... And yours grow spiritually weak and vulnerable. You have a family vacation every year, perhaps, of some sort. What about at least a daily, or uh, I'm sorry, a yearly family day of recollection or retreat, at least a day of retreat, to recharge the spiritual batteries? Will you or will you not let human respect shape your family and the souls therein? Will you, will, you, will you not allow the grace of God and his help to assist you in this monumental task which requires miraculous grace to be the spiritual leader of souls in the darkest hour and perhaps in church history? Will you forsake your role and the souls in your care? Are you the hireling pay, feeding on the pay of what will they think of me? As you may remember, I have personal experience with a family I know. One parent catered to the children, the other did not. Who do they respect? Now, some years later, the one that knew it was a true parent, and they see it now. And so it's important to pray that we be no, to not be a, a, a parent who caters to fallen nature, our own or others. While you must be firm, and this is nothing short of heroic. No less heroic, it is important and important to be gentle. As Solomon, the wisest of men, tells us, after, uh, wisest of men after our Lord, of course, tells us of the, strongly of the duty to correct. The duty the devil has demonized in our own day. And the great apostle St. Paul tells us in his epistle to the Colossians, Father, stir not your children to anger. Fathers, you are, living, are you the living model of these wisest of men? Human nature is prone to extremes, and where this is where the devil waits to harvest souls. Let him have none of ours. The hero, heroism to hold firm to the middle course and not be overbearing or permissive requires the grace that you have been given as fathers. You must call on that, stir it up, use it, do not neglect it. You are responsible and accountable for it. Never forget the privilege and responsibility is yours to share in that fatherhood of God the Father, the source of that sacred trust committed to you called authority. Do you use it correctly? As becomes true, Catholic, or pagan-minded and natural fathers, do you use it at all? Fathers, we are the watchmen at judgment. The buck stops with us. Yes, wife and children have free wills, and if you do your duty before God and guiding them and correcting them, you have nothing to fear. Done properly, you will lead them all willingly to follow, the etern to, follow to eternal bliss. 
But if you fail in your duty to guide and correct and form, and they suffer loss, remember that God will require, as it says in the Old Testament, He will require their blood at your hands. As we learn from the Old Testament, so it's important to keep that in mind, what, how fitting it is the epistle that we have before us today. Looking back at the dangers that we face, the difficulties it is to be a true father today. The sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared with the joys to come. Remember that. That is critical to keep you moving ahead. In the gospel, what do we see? Indeed, I do not have to tell you the great sufferings and trials. In the gospel, we see the great drought of fish. And what caused that obedience to God's will? And it's important to remember in this battle, in this world, where authority is constantly mocked at every turn. This is something you must not allow in your homes. You must cut it off at the source that poisons the soul in your, in souls in your care and to be, to, so you can continue to fight for them. Remember, be united to our Lord Jesus Christ and his blessed mother. Then you will have a great harvest of souls. And not only that, each and every member of that family is, so to speak, you are forming to be of use. Is it of use to God or of use to the devil? You will, those children also will bring souls. Where will they bring them? Laboring on our own, we will get nowhere as the apostles did. Laboring in obedience and in united to God, we will have a great success. And remember, all those in authority must ever guard carefully against self, self will, or be destroyed by others, or be destroyed by it and with it, and our own soul and others as well. Jesus, meek and humble of heart.